I'm going to do a real quick video here, just talking about how to fight the devil. Um, over the last couple of days, we've been getting hit by some real strong spiritual attacks, and uh, and I've learned one thing over the years being in ministry, and that is when the devil hits, hit back. First Peter chapter five, verse eight says, "Well, we'll start it actually in verse seven, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you." Pray, talk to the Lord when you're going through some rough times. All right. Verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You're supposed to be sober, all right? Don't get messing around with the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and things like that, taking your eyes off the fact that you are at war, Christian. There are times when you're going to have some nice peaceful, you know, Psalm 23, you know, kind of a deal, you know, where you're like green pastures and everything's nice and happy. Other times you're going to get hit hard. Don't quit at those times. What you do is you actually, when the devil attacks you, you go and you attack him back. I'll tell you how to do that here in just a minute. But we're to be vigilant. Sometimes when you're having a hard time, it's just because you've been messing around with sin or whatever else. But if you're not doing anything wrong and you examine yourself, you're being vigilant you're watching, you're, you're saying, well, what's going on? And, and you say, okay, I, I'm not messing around in any kind of sin right now. You know, I, don't, I haven't really done much wrong, but yet I'm still going through this really hard depression. Or this, I'm feeling uh, feelings of anxiety or, or just, uh, what's going on here? You're being attacked by the devil. All right? You have to be vigilant. You have to be ready for that time. He's trying to devour you, trying to mess you up. Verse 9, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. There are brethren that are going through it. You're not all alone. Don't feel that the Lord has abandoned you when times get tough. He hasn't abandoned you. All right. What you need to do, and I've seen this thing, like I said, every single time I go into this time where it's just like it goes and it's, it's bad and I'm not sleeping good at night, I'm having arguments, my son's acting up, things are just falling apart, I can't, you know, if I'm trying to get something done, I can't seem to get to it, whatever else. Every single time that that happens, I've found that the quickest way to get out of it, first of all, pray. The Lord can lighten the load, but if that doesn't seem to be working, if it doesn't seem like you know, wow, I'm praying here, Lord, and it just it keeps going on and on and on. What you do at that point is you start to attack the devil hard. You say, what do you mean? Well, we've had times in the past where we've been attacked. And what we'll do is, I remember the one time we had this really bad spiritual attack time, and I was like, you know what? Let's get in the, uh, get in the car and, and let's go, and we're going to go to a store and we're going to track the whole thing going to put tracks out just everywhere put them in cases of beer put them in books you know wicked books in the book section and things like this so we did if you saw my video where we were being attacked by these this wicked cult building this pentecostal cult building across the road um they had this rock concert and you know the police were called the police said we're not going to do anything about it so i said okay let's leave let's go do some tracting fight back you say, well, brother, I can't go out and do some tracting. Okay, here's what you can do. Find the most wicked atheists or whatever else here on YouTube and <coughs> go and post some scriptures in the comment section. Not get into debates with them, whatever else. Just post, post some scriptures about them being judged. All right, post some scriptures about how the Jesus, you know, came not for the righteous, but to call sinners to repentance. Things like that. They're sinners, they're wicked, they don't want to repent. That is the kind of stuff that's going to get to them. Don't give them creation science or something like this. Don't waste your time on that. Sin and judgment. I'm going to be coming out with a sermon soon on that. James chapter... Let's see, where is this one here? James chapter 4, um, verse. we'll start at verse 6. Another way to look at this whole thing. It says here, But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. You're to humble yourself. Bring yourself low. Verse 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. 
Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to, joy, to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Judge your sins. Am I sinning? Is there something wrong that I'm doing? A lot of times I've had spiritual attacks as a result of sins that I've done. I get out of fellowship with the Lord, and he has to correct me and bring me back. And one of the ways the Lord will correct you sometimes is by letting the devil attack you. Sometimes you get a little bit thick-headed up here and you don't listen to the Lord any other way. The Lord has to let some things start to fall apart for you. And all of a sudden you go, oh, okay, yeah, I don't want that. You come back to the Lord, you confess those sins. But if the attacks continue, what do you do? Resist the devil. Resist him. Like we read about over in 1 Peter chapter 5. Fight back against him. Okay? Tracting is a good way to do it. You say, well, I've been kind of putting the Bible down. Okay. Another little thing that you can do is you can say, all right, you know what? Instead of reading a chapter today, I'm going to read three chapters. You know what? Instead of listening to that music on the way to work or instead of doing this, I'm going to listen to an audio Bible, Alexander Scorby reading or something like that. I'm going to go to the next level. I'm going to go and what I was going to do for the Lord, I'm going to double it or triple it. Fight back against the devil. You know, right now it's very, very early in the morning. I should be sleeping. I only had a couple hours of sleep overnight, but it was just like I woke up and I came down and I'm praying and things and it was just like Lord's like, you know what? You got sermons to do? Get up and preach. I'll be with you. You got work to do for me and you've been putting it off because you got other work to do that's very important. I'm not being lazy or whatever else. I have a lot of work to do. But I need to do my preaching. I need to preach the Word. And when I start to kind of back off on that a little bit and, and do other things and things like that, uh, I mean, you have to take a break. You have to you have to balance it out. You know, moderation, I understand that. I can't just preach all the time. I have other responsibilities. But if you let it go too far, the devil can get in there. But you got to be careful about that stuff. Very careful. So just want to do this little video quick to exhort you out there. Uh, I feel that the Lord right now is very grieved, very vexed by how a lot of Christians have uh, thrown their hat in the ring, so to speak, for Donald Trump. Um, Hillary is, you know, people say, oh, you're supporting history. Uh, Hillary. No, I'm not. I mean, good night. Anybody that voted for her is pretty much brain dead. I mean, the woman's just a criminal, you know, and it's not even the email thing. The email thing's a joke. You know, just to say this, I'll be talking more about this in another video coming up very soon. But this whole email thing is a joke, okay? It's like the thing of Bill Clinton. Oh, he, he fornicated with an with a intern, Monica Lewinsky, and, and he lied and stuff under... That stuff is child's play. What about the drug operations down in Mena, Arkansas, being conducted, overseen by the Clinton you know, as, as he was governor down there? I mean, you want to talk crime, all right? The, I think it was over 400 people that died mysteriously, Vince Foster and, and a bunch of others that were connected to the Clintons. People being, you know, just murdered right and left. You know, a bunch of stupid emails that Hillary deleted or whatever else. That's nothing, okay? But I find it ironic how that if you go back 10 years ago before Donald Trump was running for president and you'd say, you know what, this guy's a wonderful man. I, I'm, I'm for Donald Trump. I think he's good for our country. Not one Bible-believing Christian would have agreed with you. They'd be like, the guy's a wicked fornicating adulterer. How many wives has he had? They're all like younger, you know, playboy playmates or something like this. I mean, he's wicked. He has a show and it's the apprentice thing and he's on television and he's, it's wicked and, and just profanity and all kinds of other stuff. You know, and then you see videos and things of him. Oh, I'm, you know, we're good friends with Bill and Hillary Clinton. Yeah, it's all a scam. It's professional wrestling. One minute they're friends, you know, they're friends off camera, but then they go out in front of the camera and they're putting on an act for you. And Christians buy into it. You know, and right now I feel the Lord's very, very vexed by this. The Christians lack so much discernment that they're saying, I'm going to vote for the lesser of two evils. Then that means you're voting for evil. Oh, but it's less evil. I'm going to sin, just not as bad as other people sin. And, and God's okay with that. God wants me to sin on a lower level. 
And uh, I feel that God right now is very, very, very vexed. And as a Christian, you're going to feel some of that. You're going to feel, I mean, we're connected to Him. All right. And you're going to feel that feeling of like, Ugh. And it's at those times that the devil will attack you. The devil will wait till you're weak. Okay, the lions don't go after the fastest one in a herd. You get a bunch of gazelle or something running, and, or zebras or whatever else. They're running. The, the lion doesn't go after the strong one. They go after the one that's weak. The one that's got kind of a little bit of a limp, and he's kind of not running as fast as the others. The lion goes, that's the one right there. So you can get weak because of messing around with sin, but you can also get weak doing good as a Christian. But yet, the Lord is vexed by what's going on. You're feeling that. There's a lot of spiritual oppression. You know, the power of Satan is growing. You know, the Jesuit order is getting more and more control. And you just feel like, oh, just kind of downtrodden and things like that. Uh, the best thing that you can do is turn and fight. You say, okay, Satan, you want to mess with me? You want to mess up my life? You want to do that? Okay, today I'm going to go out and go tracting. Hey, today on the way to work, I'm going to stop someplace and I'm going to walk into some store and I'm going to say, this is for you, give it to somebody, gospel tract, turn around, walked out. That's it. Hey, uh, I'm going to go onto YouTube and I'm going to find the, the most wicked atheist channels or Catholic channels or whatever else, Islamic, whatever, and I'm just going to go in there, I'm going to copy and paste some scripture, boom, in the comment section, reply, you know, boom, or whatever, I'll post comment, like that, and that's it. Fight the devil. When he attacks you, fight back. The worst thing that you can do is to lay down your, your weapons and just simply say, Oh, I, I just, I'm really having a hard time and whatever else. Don't do that. Don't do that. And I find it ironic, I'll say this yet in closing, that the modern uh, church, uh, that's the theme of what they really want to do with the Christians that are dumb enough to attend those places. They say, Let's not be militant. Let's stop fighting. It, fighting is divisive, and it is. Okay, we're supposed to be bring division in that in that sense. Okay, we're not sowing seeds of division among brethren. We're sowing division between saved and lost, because there is a very clear distinction. All right. They'll say, let's let's not sing onward, Christian soldiers. Let's let's drop the warfare stuff. Let's let's not fight. Let's not fight about it. Okay. These are issues that people, that cause division. Let's not, see what they're doing? It's a satanic movement. They're stopping you from fighting the devil. That's what they're doing. So, got a couple other sermons I need to get done here. Uh, so I'm going to get to those. But just uh, wanted to make this video and uh, just, just like, you know what? Things are pretty rough right now. So, it's time to fight. It's time to take the gloves off and start hitting the devil again. Okay, don't let him get on top of you as a lion and just start ripping you apart. Fight back.